Now I will say, you guys have all been waiting for me to let the cat out of the bag here. What's up guys? We will see how long my hair stays down. It's already making me crazy. So some days I have videos that are very conceptual that are difficult to film and I have to think about the logistics of them and things like that. And then there are days where I just get a layup. And this is one of those days because today we are trying the incredibly requested new change maker collection from Bite Beauty. Bite Beauty is a clean beauty brand, make all their stuff out of food grade ingredients. And this is the first time that they have gone into complexion products, to my knowledge. So we have the Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. I got it in the shade L10, I just guessed. We also have the Skin Optimizing Primer, and we have the Change Maker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder, and we're gonna be putting them all on my face today. Now, because this was so requested, and I was in such a big hurry to get them for you guys, this is a first impression. We haven't done a first impression on my channel in a really long time. And that is because I typically like to get a really well-rounded idea of how a product performs before I tell you guys like my final, final, final thoughts on it. So we're just making an exception today. And I will attempt to answer any of your questions down below if you feel like this video doesn't really answer all of your questions. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. Yep, that was it. Hope you enjoyed my hair down, cause that was it. All right, so we are going to start with the primer. That's what the little bottle looks like. And it's in a squeezy tube. It's not in a pump or anything like that. I think it's an interesting choice. It does feel very minimal in terms of packaging. I didn't think that this was like a full ounce, but it is. It's so hard doing a first impression of something because it's like, <laughs> I don't know yet how everything's gonna dry down, but this does feel like it's got a little bit of like a grip to it. It does feel like it's a little bit smoothing. And I know that it's supposed to be kind of a, like a skincare based sort of thing, but we'll read up on everything once we get it on. All right, next I'm gonna go in with the Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. And like I said, I got the shade L10. I actually scrubbed my tan off for this <laughs> because I wanted it to match. You guys saw in my last video, I had a pretty hard time getting my face to match my neck because I hadn't done a fake tan in so long. And I was sent a really, really great box of goodies from Loving Tan they also sent me a really great little scrubby glove thing so that I could just get in the bathtub last night and scrub all of my tan off so that I could be pale again. Kind of just, it's really grown on me, the whole, the whole pale thing. We'll see what happens come summertime, but like right now I don't really feel like forcing the issue. But I will say that little scrubby glove worked <laughs> some serious wonders to the extent that like, there's a ring around my tub, I was like, Dang, that's my tan I'm looking at, that's crazy. All right, so it does have medium coverage, that's what it says. And I haven't tried a like an actual claims to be medium coverage foundation in a while. It's been mostly like satin finish medium to full and you know, super, super, super light, almost like just skin tints. So I don't know, I feel like it's not necessarily like a super popular uh, finish or coverage level right now. Everybody's either going for like a, a glam look or they're going for like a really dewy like mascara and chapstick Twitter kind of vibe. So I'm excited to see how this works. Now I will say, you guys have all been waiting for me to let the cat out of the bag here. Why is this scented? Why does this have a fragrance in it? They are a clean beauty brand. They must know their audience. Why would they put a fragrance in it? It definitely is noticeably fragranced and I was chatting with a couple of you guys last night about it because I posted about it on my Instagram and you guys were like, what does it smell like? I think the best way that I can think to describe it is like women's deodorant, like a, like a slightly floral women's deodorant kind of smell. So I did, I think, I think, I'm not sure. I know that this comes in a lot of shades, but I think in order to like air on the side of being pale enough for me, I might've gone with like a more neutral shade. So it might be reading a little bit pink in comparison to my body. Although I think it's actually really great. I am more neutral when I don't have a tan. Is that too much light? Is that too much? I'm like getting used to this new setup. I guess we'll see. Okay, so first impressions, I really, like the finish on this. And you can tell that it has dimethicone in it. That's not everybody's thing. I personally love dimethicone because it makes it so that you can wear something really lightly on your face. Like there's something so 
weightless about dimethicone. If it doesn't bother your skin, I think that dimethicone is just a really like miraculous ingredient, especially for like wear time, flexibility, um, you know, resilience to different temperatures and things like that. And I really, really enjoy the way that that looks. And it is a really, really nice coverage level. So I'm going to put on a little bit of concealer real quick. Let's go with the Hourglass again, just because it does offer so much coverage and this doesn't really one of you guys was telling me about that in the live chat in the last video you guys were like you know what i've been really loving the hourglass concealer because i don't like to wear a whole lot of coverage on my you know regular complexion if i don't have any blemishes or anything and it's nice to have something that can totally provide coverage if you need it where you need it kind of thing so this definitely does that also i have been taking sweet, loving care of my like hormonal situations that are going on. So I have like a brand new one right between my eyes. Love that. Here comes mother nature. But also I found just solace, <laughs> refuge in the amazing combination that I will share with you guys over and over and over again. But the OC red algae mask that has tons of tea tree oil in it and a bunch of other really gorgeous stuff and my light stim for acne. Oh my God, that combination. And I work from home, so I literally will just like light stim my face all day long. <laughs> I'll just like run it for an entire 30 minute cycle, let it cool down and then maybe 20 minutes later, do it again. And I just kind of worked that across this thing for a while and then the one on my forehead for, or between my eyes for a while. And I just, noticed such a difference so much more than the like hydrocolloid patches i also realized that i don't really like the little spiky patches they tend to like kind of piss my pimples off you know because you, they're actually penetrating the skin a little bit and it just doesn't seem to be something that my skin really enjoys the regular hydrocolloid patches tend to work better but i actually like the masquerade ones better than the rayal ones that i bought that is just feeling totally beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I feel like a million bucks. And I will say that the, the fragrance does not really linger. I don't know why they did it. I'll be honest. I don't know why they did it, but it doesn't linger. And also it is a lot of people are like, oh, it's really high on the ingredient list. You have to keep in mind the rules of the way ingredients are listed on packages. I highly recommend watching Kenna's video on this. I link her channel on my front page, but how to read an ingredients list basically. And it's hard to know necessarily, but you can pretty much predict as soon as you get into certain like stabilizers and things like that, you have hit the 1% line and it's a lot sooner than you think it is. So the companies in America, maybe in the whole world, I don't know, but at least in America, are required to list their ingredients in order of greatest to least, except if they are less than 1% of the overall formula. And in that case, they can list them in any order that they want. And so the fragrance definitely falls below the 1% line on this package. And if you contact the company, I've had plenty of people reach out to me and tell me that the response that they're getting from Bite Beauty is that it's less than 1% of the overall formula. And it has to be that, I believe, in order to be considered clean at Sephora too. Now, this is something that I'm a little concerned about because typically I would do my complexion and then that's kind of it. You know, I can sort of count on whatever I build in that sense and then I put on a translucent powder and it just kind of preserves what I made. This is a tinted powder. It comes in several shades. So this is the Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder and you're supposed to be able to kind of put it on with this, touch up during the day, things like that. And, I'm leery of things like this. I did get it in the shade light. Let's see if we can get a better swatch than that. Okay, it looks mostly translucent, to be honest. Like that's what it looks like in the pan. And I will say that this does not feel like Mac Studio Fix, you know? So I'm gonna just tippity tap that. All of the color matches, all two of them are very good. I don't necessarily love a pressed powder though, because as soon as you dip your brush into it and then touch your face that has slightly dewy texture to it, and then you dip it back into the pan, the pan tends to gum up. One of you guys asked me actually a really, really great question. 
and my like truth or dare that like it's not a really difficult question so I probably won't include it in the video I'll just answer it now but it was like what product do you did you buy like a backup of that was premature and you kind of regret it and it was the cure wise powder because I really really love it but you lose like a quarter of the package to redipping your brush because the cure wise foundation is so so dewy it's so like coconut oily that you end up gumming that powder up so badly, like no matter what you do. Okay, well, there's almost no coverage to that powder. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> there's no fragrance to the primer or the powder and the packaging's really gorgeous. We're not talking soft touch here. Like this is soft touch. This is just a regular uh, plastic tube and this is a plastic compact, but yeah, it's got a mirror in it. It's a bite right there. And that is just, again, like incredibly lightweight on the skin. So beautiful. I will say not everything on my face is like 100% covered. I don't think that that's necessarily what they were going for. I think that they do know their customer in the sense that I'm not making, I don't want to make any assumptions, but I just feel like putting out a medium coverage foundation appeals to a lot more people than going to like one or two of the like extremes. Really enjoying that. Okay, so I'm going to go put the rest of my makeup on really fast and we'll come back, we'll talk about the ingredients, the claims, like the overall concept of this, because it is like a, a release, it's a collection. Bite Beauty as a brand so far, and then we will go into the wear test. Did I forget to mention that? It's the first impression and we're also doing a wear test. I always do a wear test with foundations. This should not be a surprise. So I will see you guys in a minute. <laughs> okay, we are back. I put on some earrings. I was getting Tommy Pickles vibes, just all the baldness on camera. <laughs> so I just needed to feel a little bit more feminine. So let's talk about these products now that I have them on my face. I will say everything else went on really beautifully. I'm really enjoying this face of makeup. It's super, super lightweight. I felt like I had all of the options in the world. I always talk about how when you put a foundation on it kind of dictates what the rest of your makeup is going to look like in terms of like drama. If you go in with a full coverage foundation, you're kind of setting yourself up for like a look for the rest of your face too. At least I feel like that, like it's kind of just like a snowball effect. Whereas if I go in with something dewy and then I try and go for drama, they just don't really agree with each other because the light hits the two things differently. So I felt like this gave me a lot of options without feeling like I had a lot of makeup on my face and I'm really enjoying it so far. Okay, so this is intended to be kind of a system in the sense that they do all really work together really well. I was a little bit concerned, like I said at the beginning, that the powder was going to be more like a powder foundation and I didn't want to put a powder foundation on top of a regular foundation, but turns out that the powder is extremely lightweight and only tinted in so far as they really want to make sure that the translucency seems to like match your complexion. It does not really add a lot of coverage. So the skin optimizing primer is $38. The supercharged my cellar foundation is $39.50 and the change maker flexible coverage pressed powder is $36. The Skin Optimizing Primer comes in two colors. They're not colors, they are finishes. One is for oily skin and it's going to have a matte finish and, or it's going to be mattifying. And I got the, where did she go? Normal to dry skin one, which I assume is just, you know, optimized to my skin. So the Micellar Foundation comes in 32 shades. Like I said, I got it in the shade L10. And Elton, wow, Elton is the fairest shade. This is what she looks like, just regular swatched. And it is fair light with cool undertone. So I did go for a cool undertone, like I said, in lieu of trying to match my undertones too much. I just really wanted to get the fairest shade and it worked out just fine. I feel like it's adaptive. I don't feel like I'm necessarily like the warmest when it comes to being not self tanned. So I feel like I was able to make that work pretty well. I will say though, as soon as I put bronzer on top of it, I immediately regretted it. I ended up going in with a lot of my Well People Bio Base Baked Brightener to like pull a lot of the pigment back away from where I'd put bronzer on my cheeks because it just was like really orange in contrast, like oranger than usual. I just kind of wanted to stick with like nice, like corally blushes and things like that. And like that be the warmest thing on my face for this look because it really did like play to my cool tones because I did that. We'll start with the foundation. It says a clean high performance foundation with gentle micellar technology to mimic skin texture for a natural flawless finish. 
buildable medium coverage in 32 long wear shades. They do a good job on their website of showing it on every complexion. So if you need to go and kind of see what it looks like, even if like the undertones or whatever, like aren't resonating with you, see, you know, the person that they have it on. And that's going to be a lot more helpful, especially more helpful than, I mean, I'm not sure how they have it on the Sephora website. They might've just uploaded the same photos, but in a lot of cases, especially with pigment products, like blushes and stuff, Sephora loves to put the same model and just Photoshop her cheeks every time. And it makes me crazy. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't tell me anything. So anyway, yes. I also want to mention that while these are like $113 and 50 cents for the entire uh, collection, if you buy them individually, which I did at Sephora just because I wanted them to ship more quickly, you can buy them on the Bite Beauty website and they knock like, I don't know, $15 off. So it's like 98.50. Why you need it, make the change. Finally, clean and high performance are no longer mutually exclusive. I will say, I suffer from that. I can identify with that. There are a handful of products that I've told you guys about in the past. It's like someone has actually decided to make prestige makeup that performs, that has a clean ingredients, uh, you know, like Aether, um, Cover Effects, you know, just brands that are really doing a good job of like putting performance first while not sacrificing like ingredient integrity. However, why is there fragrance in this? I maintain. This creamy longwear foundation perfects your skin with buildable medium coverage. The secret we use antioxidant rich superfood maki berry and gentle micellar technology. What is micellar technology? Like, what does that even mean? Can someone tell me what that means? I don't know what that means. I don't use a micellar water. I don't know. Uh, and feels good on your skin even if you're sensitive. <sighs> If you're sensitive, you probably don't want a fragrance in your foundation. How to use it, dot foundation under your cheeks, forehead, and nose. For best results, use your fingers or a brush. Start from the center of your face and blend outward. Build coverage with fingers on places that need it. Now, I did use a sponge. I don't really think that it was to my detriment. I like how it looked. And I also feel like if I wanted to, I could have worn this any coverage level I wanted. It could have gone completely sheer if I wanted it to. I could have built it up in places. I don't think it would ever build to full coverage. There are certain foundations, I've talked about this in the past, where you know they have a comfort level that they like to be at in terms of coverage and they don't have a lot of flexibility outside of that. So the Milk Makeup Flex Foundation Stick, I feel like is a really good example of that. It builds to full coverage and it's very happy at full coverage. If you try and shear it out too much, it gets really inconsistent and just kind of highlights your pores. Whereas like the Saint Beauty, Saint Cosmetics Foundation that I tried a few weeks ago, I felt like it really stopped at a certain coverage level too. Like you wouldn't want to build it up because it was too emollient. This is so lightweight on your face and the pigment is not super Super intense that I feel like you have a lot more options, like I said. The Change Maker Skin Optimizing Primer, $38. A clean, high-performance primer with skin optimizing technology to neutralize your skin type and grip foundation for flawless lasting wear. So like I said, this is a first impression. I didn't really know. It did feel a little bit grippy on my face. It definitely has dimethicone in it too, so it's going to be a little bit pore blurring. I think that it's a great combo. And it also, again, unlike a lot of other primers that I've used, feels really lightweight on my skin. Why you need it, meet the perfect link between your clean skincare routine and your makeup. Choose your primer based on your skin type, hydrate with our primer for normal to dry skin or mattify control shine and blur the look of pores with our primer for normal to oily skin. Both primers are supercharged with anti antioxidant rich superfood maki berry to nourish your complexion and create the perfect canvas for our long wear foundation. So I do want to talk about maki berry because they keep talking about it. So it says antioxidant rich and helps nourish your complexion native to Patagonia known to be one of the purest environments on earth. So antioxidants, oxidizing is aging. We are always trying to fight free radicals. And so that is the appeal of antioxidants. Maki berry is, you know, probably a trendy berry, much like acai. Not to say that it's not effective, not to say that it's not doing what they say it's doing. I think that that's great, um, but that is what they're basically claiming. So the hyaluronic acid complex is in the hydrating version as well as olive oil, whereas they have willow bark in the mattifying for controlling shine and blur and et cetera. So yes, I will say actually that when I do my skincare in the morning, I use a lot of products that tend to be slippy. And so I was a little bit concerned about putting foundation on directly on top of it. I kind of always am. And so I was concerned maybe the primer was going to make it like too many layers of goo, you know, but it wasn't. So the Change Maker Flexible coverage pressed powder. I got it in the lightest shade, which is light one for cool undertones, uh, for light skin tones. Again, I had to go with this because the next one would have been just a bronzer on me essentially. Uh, it says a clean talc free powder made with finely milled volcanic uh, minerals to blur, mattify and touch up on the go. So even though there are eight shades in it and you can find something that really matches you pretty nicely, 
it's not going to like build up a bunch of coverage if you do touch up during the day. So it says, why you need it? Clean Beauty can be high performance too. The proof is in the powder. This long wearing, super lightweight powder lets you boost coverage for a silky soft matte finish that melds with your skin. That's because it's made with antioxidant rich superfood maki berry and finely milled volcanic minerals, not talc, to blur, control, shine, and mattify. What comes to mind when they talk about volcanic minerals is the masquerade zit patches that I used to use. I need to re-up on those, but basically the active ingredients are active ingredients, you know, the things that are working, volcanic ash and tea tree oil. And I find that they work the best overnight on a zit out of anything that I've used. And I've used a lot of ones that have like more technology in them than that. This one's like super, super basic and straightforward and it's super, super effective. So I don't know. I mean, it's all kind of buzzwords and things like that where they're talking about all these like exotically sourced ingredients, but at the same time, like volcanic ash is very effective at mattifying and soaking up oil without like offending your skin. It says gently buff on powder with a brush or included puff to boost coverage for best results, blah 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 you put it on your face you can you can use a brush or you can use the little sponge that they give you in fact does it have sometimes they like open up you know and you can put the thing inside there but i guess you just kind of have to store it on top so their big thing at bite is that they are powered by superfoods hence the maki berry and uh all of the food grade ingredients that are featured in their products and they do have a couple of i would consider to be you know not awesome ingredients when it comes to my personal preferences the foundation does have have linalool and limonene in them, but they are the last two ingredients we're talking like, I mean, obviously they could be at any amount, but definitely lower than 1%. They feature ingredients like agave nectar, orange peel wax, coconut oil. There isn't coconut oil in this though. Although C1315 alkane might be a coconut alkane. Oh, cocoa caprolate. Yeah, that's pulled from uh, from coconut. So I lied. There's coconut in this. Uh, acai, mangosteen extract, pomegranate oil, lots of natural antioxidants. Um, and the things that they leave out, this is a long list, so bear with me. Sulfates, parabens, formaldehyde, formaldehyde releasing agents, phthalates, undisclosed synthetic fragrance, undisclosed synthetic fragrance. We're just going to tell you. Mineral oil, retinol palmitate, oxybenzone, petrolatum and paraffin, PEGs, ethanolamines, cyclic silicones. That's the second time we've heard that. The first time that we heard that was uh, on Victoria Beckham. Nanoparticles, GMOs, aluminum, coal tar, hydroquinone, triclosan and triclocarbon, talc, animal derived ingredients, and it's also gluten free. They do speak to the ingredients. We use both naturally derived scents and less than 1% of synthetic fragrance. We consider it indulging responsibly. So they are adding fragrance by their account to increase the luxury, the indulgence, the experience of it. It's not necessarily, I would think, to mask something. I mean, typically that is why we put fragrance in things is because they don't smell very good on their own. I don't really think that that was the case here. I think it was an editorial decision, but I do from the feedback that I'm getting feel like some of their audience might find that to be a little bit tone deaf to the people who are concerned with clean beauty. Like fragrance is just such an easy thing to leave out. That said, it's not really lingering. It's not really bothering me. Although I am just smelling mostly this Namaste candle right now. That's like sweet orange scented and it's fantastic. But I am really digging this so far. It's so smooth on my skin. It looks so natural, but like better than natural. It made the rest of my makeup go on really nicely. Again, it feels really, really lightweight. And I just think that the coverage level is so, so gorgeous. So I am going to wear this for the rest of my day. And I will check in with you guys in I about seven hours. I've been wearing this about an hour now already. And we will chat results. I feel pretty good about it, but we'll see how it kind of communicates with everything else that I have on my face. And I will see you guys at the end of my day. Hello, it's the end of my day. It is 5 p.m. I've been wearing this for eight hours on the nose and I feel like I could wear it for another eight hours, you guys. Now, I have thoughts individually on these products, but I do wanna say the overarching sentiment is Yay. <laughs> I, I'm looking at myself in my monitor obnoxiously right now. I will try and focus on the lens at hand here, but I am so pleased with the way that all of this behaved, how everything on my face didn't just stay true to color, but I always like when something wears in nicely. I, I think that that goes a long way with makeup. Makeup is never going to look exactly the way it did when you put it on. And I actually don't love makeup right when I put it on. I like it about an hour, hour and a half later. And this just over the course of the day wore in so beautifully. The smoothing stuck around all day. Sometimes 
when you have things that are too smoothing, like a little bit too much mica or something like that in your products, a lot of times it will cause things to get like that Tin Man look and like really highlight all of your texture by the end of the day. And this didn't do that. It stayed very true to texture all day. Does that make sense? And when we zoom in, I do want you to also keep in mind that I built up coverage on top of my blemishes and underneath my eyes with the old trusty rusty here lily lolo blondie mineral concealer so if you see kind of like a cake up breakup on those spots that's not this powder that's this right here and it's because i wanted it to serve that purpose not of breaking up and caking up but of having that totally opaque coverage that could like you know cancel out under eye darkness and cancel out like you know the purpleness of like a healing zit shining through my makeup without putting like a ton more product on my face i think that not only did this do surprisingly well in these circumstances but i want to wear this in the summertime i think it's going to be gorgeous in the summertime because it's very balancing it's very stabilizing i felt like so many of the areas on my face that usually show stress showed less stress as a result of wearing this in like dry weather but also i think that people with oily skin would probably really like this especially with the customized oily skin primer i think that this will work beautifully for a lot of people in that sense i absolutely love the foundation I love it. I love the packaging. I love the shade match. I love the shade range. I'm a fan of the ingredients with the exception of the fragrance, but the fragrance doesn't stick around. Brand owners make choices and they make choices that we sometimes disagree with. And we have to decide whether those are deal breakers for us or not. And in this case, the fragrance is not a deal breaker for me. My skin feels really happy truly and i really like the primer too i felt it when it went on it was super lightweight did a really good job of gripping my foundation especially because of how well it made the rest of my makeup look on top of it from like a long wear standpoint it definitely like supports the long wear claim because it really just it looks like a pretty fresh face of makeup if you're looking at the actual like pigmentation value of it i'm gonna get a little bit preachy speechy here and just say that there is such a large distinction between the prestige products that have been considered from a performance standpoint and then backed out of from an ingredient standpoint rather than I feel like starting from the ingredient standpoint and trying to make something work with that. I feel like that again it might be a completely arbitrary delineation but that in my mind is what separates the wheat from the chaff in terms of like all of the clean beauty that I tried last year that disappointed me or was just entirely forgettable. It wasn't even so much disappointing. It was just super forgettable and also extremely expensive. And then there are these brands now who are taking consideration to make sure that the product that they put out like this is considered. You might not agree with everything that they did, but you have to admit that they considered everything. And this performs like a clean beauty product for makeup lovers, not for clean beauty people. And that is what I aim to find, you know? They are few and far between, but I really, really like this. I really, really like this, especially, and I know it's not like cheap, cheap, but the amount of money that I've paid for crappy clean beauty, this is a very practically priced little bundle here. Like I said, you can go on their website, you can get all three of these for under $100. And I think that you could have a holy grail system right here that you could use every single day because you can get so many different looks with this kind of versatility and this kind of coverage level and this finish. All things considered, I think that this is absolutely an everyday foundation routine, I guess is what you would call it, that I would highly recommend, highly recommend, so. I hope that was helpful. I'm actually so glad that I liked it. There have been so many of these like hype, hype, hype releases in the past that just, <sighs> I have like horror stories in my mind of just how bad it is when something like that disappoints you because when something's super, super hyped and you have to tell people that it's not good, you end up really having to like back that opinion up, which is totally fine. I don't mind doing it, but like it is a heck of a lot easier 
when you love something that you wanted to love. And I do, I love this. So I'm like excited to wear it for the rest of the day. I'm excited to wear it tomorrow kind of thing. Like it's exciting to find makeup that you love. So I hope that that recommendation means something for you guys. I hope that this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, for watching. I love you so much and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.